Hey there, it's Abriana, and you're listening to the Digital Hoofprint Podcast. It has been a while since I have produced episodes of this podcast, but I am excited to be back, okay? And I am excited that you are here listening to this episode because I felt so compelled to go ahead and get started and record this particular episode because of some really cool things that I have going on in my life, but also because I'm planning for a whole reboot of this, okay? I am here to help you establish your digital hoof print, and that is exactly what you're going to learn through listening this podcast to this podcast. So I'm going to go through a little bit of a reintroduction, okay? I'm going to introduce myself, tell you a little bit about who I am, then I'm going to talk about what a digital hook print is, okay? Then we're going to have a little bit of a conversation about breadcrumbs. There's some things that have come up for me recently that are have led me back to the very beginning, and I want to give you some insight into that. Next, we're going to talk about what I'm going to offer for this year, what my, my plan is, how you can engage with me and establish your digital hoof print in 2024. And we're going to wrap this thing up, okay? I have challenged myself to create episodes that are 30 minutes or less, okay? So let's see if we can do this because you know I'm a wordy girl and I will talk and talk and talk, all right? So we're going we're gonna to do this within 30 minutes, all right? So since you are already learning a little bit more about me, again, I am Abriana. I am a North Carolina native. I'm from Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and I have been a horse lover since I was very, very young. However, I started riding when I was young and then I stopped and didn't start again until high school. And that was when I decided that I wanted to go into vet med. I wanted to be a veterinarian like many horse girls do. Uh, Went to NC State, got my uh, bachelor's of animal science and started working in an animal hospital and did not end up going to vet school. But what happened was I ended up, you know, when you're wanting to go to vet school, you have to get a plethora of hours and different experiences to show that, show your commitment and show your experience and show that you actually know what happens in the industry. So I got research experience, small animal, large animal, mixed animal, tons, like uh, 1200 hours of experience. And through that and working in a small animal hospital post-graduation, I was exposed to the back ends of so many different animal businesses, that that became a big interest for me. How does this operate? How do you um, create a amazing client experience? How do you connect with the client so that you can help the animal in the best way possible? That was huge for me. And so in working at the animal hospital, I started managing the pet resort. And did that for three years and had huge success in that kind of arena. I mean, it was it was so much fun. I got to be creative. I got to have so many ideas fleshed out and how we can create an amazing environment for the animals that came to see us, but also for the clients so that they were like, if my dog does not come here, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> and so... Fast forward, we hit the pandemic, right? People weren't traveling. And I said, you know what? I think this is an opportunity for me because I love large animal. I love horses. And I love looking at the businesses that horse people operate. And now that we are in the pandemic and, you know, horse activities are some of the few things that we're able to do. We need to bring this industry into the 21st century. And so I left my job at the animal hospital to start Black Unicorn Creative, where I, I'm i not even going to go through the, the very beginnings of things. Actually, I lied. I am. You know, I, I started with logo design, then brand design, then website development. And 
I felt like there was still a root that was not being uncovered, right? That people who came to me for web and brand design had the same problem. So there was still a foundational piece that was not happening. And some of the things you need before you get to a brand and web designer, so you don't have to do this, the, the website development process over and over and over again, because your, your branding is not consistent and it does not feel authentic to you. And so that's what I am here to explore. And that's what I believe the digital hoof print is. Uh, some of the brands that I have created on my own, I'll share that a little bit. Um, one of them is Black in the Saddle. Uh, it's a podcast and media platform. Started off being called Young Black Equestrians, but we had a rebrand. It's now called Black in the Saddle. And there's over a hundred episodes of interviews and conversations about the impact and the influence of Black people on the horse industry. So wherever you are listening to this podcast, you can also find Black in the Saddle episodes as well. My second brand and the one that is the focus for my year in 2024 is Cowgirl Cameron. Cowgirl Cameron started off as a children's book series and is now being developed into a licensed character brand. So I'm talking, I want media, I want uh, retail products, activities, you know, Cowgirl Cameron, I will truly want to be a global brand that helps kids navigate uh, situations where they feel like they don't belong and they're trying to find their place in this world and understanding that our connection to animals and to the environment is so integrated that that is where we find our place. And we're teaching that. I'm teaching that through Cowgirl Cameron and different situations that show up on the farm, different farm realities that we all know of as horse people, as agriculturists, you know, having that connection and finding place in that is so important to me and something that I feel like can really help the next generation. So I'm really super excited about those two things and, you know, they fall under the umbrella of Black Unicorn Creative. So I am so excited to be in the process and and model what it is that I really hope to teach here. Now, let's talk about what a digital hoof print is, okay? Your digital hoof print is your online presence and the digital impact that you make. That's a short version, okay? You, when you show up online or when you incorporate technology into your process, all of that encompasses your digital hoof print. And so when we say that we want to establish that, we want to identify how you are going to craft how people engage with you. You know, we talk about branding. I love branding so much. Um, and a brand is what other people think about what you have to offer. It's akin to your reputation, but in more of a gut feeling sense. Like when I see Nike, I'm like, mm, I'm about to go do something. Yeah, like, let's go, right? When you see, um, I'm trying to think of like a food brand. I don't even know. I shop at Aldi. I don't get name brand. <laughs> or like when you see McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or Wendy's, you know, some of these fast food brands, they have different personas in your head, right? You you have different associations with them. And so in developing a brand and crafting what you want that experience to be, the incorporation of technology for reach and uh, expansion and for uh, 
curating the type of experience that you want people to have with your business, that is what is that is what is all involved in your digital hoof print. You know, when I was first crafting this model of a di digital hoof print, I was like, oh yeah, it's just a website. It's your website and your social media. But then I built websites and did people's social media and realized, okay, wait a second. We have to take a step back. We have to go back in the house. We got to see what's going on up under the hood. How are we incorporating technology into our onboarding, into our sales process, into our distribution? What is that like? How is that impacting the brand? And so I realized this digital hoof print is a little bit more expansive than simply putting up a website and posting on social media. And so if you made it this far, I am so excited for you to go on this journey with me in exploring all the intricacies of a digital hoof print and what it means to establish that intentionally. Now, you may say, you know, from listening to this podcast, okay, okay, Abriana, I am, I'm here. I am ready to establish my digital hoof print. How do I get more social media followers? I want to tell you how this is going to work. <laughs> so the digital hoof print podcast is going to be an exploration of these larger concepts, right? It's going to explore what it means to develop a brand, what it means to um, cultivate a social media community, what it means to um, have different touch points in your customer journey so that you're communicating what you want, where you want, and converting in a way that makes sense for your business. We are going to be discussing and breaking down these larger concepts I have something really cool that I'm working on that will be available in Q2 of 2024. So March, April, April, 2024. It is called Beyond the Hoof Print. And it is a private podcast that will be available for people who have engaged with me in some sort of way, either have gotten on my email list or have purchased a service for me. And so that beyond the hoof print is going to discuss those nitty gritty details, the, the tactics, the um, step-by-steps that I recommend for different scenarios and different use cases and different goals. Um, one of the things that I found is that um, when you start with tactics, people get confused. They start cutting corners because they don't understand why. When you start with just the why and these overarching concepts, people don't really know what they're supposed to do next. Okay. So this digital hoof print podcast is really going to discuss the why and give you the additional context and Beyond the digital hoof print or beyond the hoof print is going to discuss those tactical details and step by steps to implement what it is that you have learned here. So you can get excited for that, honestly, because um, it's bridging the gap for me that was so apparent in a lot of the work that I have done in the past. All right. One of the things that drew me, compelled me to record this episode today was this idea of breadcrumbs. Okay. My, well, a huge part of a huge chunk of my journey that I did not share before is that I quit my job in 2020, uh, started my business. And um, that was September of 2020. In February of 2021, I became a caregiver for my grandfather who had dementia. And so that rocked my idea of what I was able to accomplish in my business 
because it ended up not being very much, um, not as a full-time caregiver with someone who was that um, far gone in the disease. And so it took me a long time to get my feet back under myself and say, okay, this is what I am capable of. This is what I have to offer. And this is what I have the capacity for given my current circumstances. And so my grandfather passed eight days ago. And since his passing, we have, you know, been preparing, you know, I won't get off on a tangent uh, with how amazing my granddaddy was, because he was. Um, but let me just say, the man planned his own funeral, all right? He, he wrote everything. He wrote his program, obituary, you know, assigned roles, okay? He wrote everything. So I don't want to hear anything about my type A preparedness, okay? Because I get it honest. I'm pretty sure it's genetic at this point. <laughs> But in in looking back and getting the house ready for guests who might want to stop by, we came across so many photo albums. And my granddad was dedicated for over 50 years to documenting and archiving his life from things that were... I mean, it's I can't even fathom like his experiences in Vietnam and Okinawa to just document the flowers that were here in his yard. Um, a 50 year hobby of documentation with every Polaroid, with every image. Some of these images are pre Polaroid. Um, writing captions and writing who is in those photos and saying, you know, this is where we were. This is, he has um, pictures uh, while he's on some sort of naval ship going underneath the Golden Gate Bridge, October 22nd, 1955. It is amazing. There's 16 photo albums. And I mean, there's pictures even before that of his family, family, um, farming, um, on a wagon drawn by mules. Um, there's a great uncle of his found articles of him in a vineyard in my, you know, additional spare time that I have, you know, I'm studying wine. And so to see those breadcrumbs, those nuggets of history that seemingly influence who I am today that has been a transformative experience. And so when we think about breadcrumbs in the online space, in a digital space, breadcrumbs are a line of, of texts or links that help you navigate back to where you were. They're digital aids that assist in navigation of different online spaces. So if you visit a homepage and then you click um, the blog and then you click what is a brand, you will likely have digital breadcrumbs along the top that says um, blog home, right? This, it, this is not necessarily the menu at the top, but this will be kind of lower, lower on the page giving you a pathway, like this is where you came from. And this is, you can click any of these links to get back to where you want to be. And these breadcrumbs, you know, knowing that there is a digital significance and importance to them, but also realizing how finding breadcrumbs in the form of images um pictures of me honestly you know i i really thought that i you know when i look back and have this story of my childhood i never felt like i was really a horse obsessed kid um not in the way like i didn't watch saddle club y'all i didn't watch it i didn't read the books like that it just wasn't in my childhood, I just, sorry. Um, but I have some 
pictures of me. And I'm going to post them here. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see them right here. I have a picture of me like gnawing on some, on some sort of toy in my grandfather's home, the home that I'm in now. And there's horses behind me on the bottom row of the entertainment system area. And I saw that and I was like, wow, like that is an incredible breadcrumb that that drives me and gives me a sense of purpose and validation for the work that I'm doing now. I found another image. I'll put that here. Um, I was at my grandma's house and I am smiling from cheek to cheek. My hair is a mess. And I have on this sweater that has a horse on it. And I have seen that image so many times. And I didn't even really look at the fact that there was this, I was wearing this knit sweater that had a horse head on it. And so in looking at my very first children's book, Cowgirl Cameron and the Crazy Hair Day, I see these, these breadcrumbs, these nuggets of lived experience that contribute to the stories that I'm creating today. Um, I have had a mentor for the last almost four months. And she uh, was assigned to me through an association called Women's in Toys Licensing and Entertainment. And that's the association that I joined to figure out how to develop Cowgirl Cameron into a licensed character brand. And um, she unlocked something huge for me. Previously, when when people ask me, I'm like, oh, is Cowgirl Cameron you? I was like, no, Cowgirl Cameron, you know, she would be the the kid that I would have, you know, and then I just get to raise her by writing and telling the stories about her, right? Um, but my mentor unlocked something for me a couple months ago. And I realized that Cowgirl Cameron. You know, there's a significance to the fact that she's seven. There's a significance to the fact that that's where that character showed up for me. And thinking back, you know, I kind of stopped writing when I was seven. I had an experience and I felt like it was not for me. And so Cowgirl Cameron has entered the chat to be that brand that guides kids through that pivotal point where they are learning self-identity and, and starting to explore their place in the world and saying, you belong here. You can do this. You might have these different situations show up for you, but in knowing yourself and being able to connect with the environment around you and, and understanding that you share that with these other animals and uh, having these conversations. Yes, she's having conversations with animals, but these are conversations that kids can take to their friends and to their parents and to the adults around them to say, you know, I need help with this or I don't understand this. And they're able to have a shared experience through reading Calgary Cameron say she did this so I can too or she had questions about this so do I and this is how she got through it or her barnyard besties her herd dealt with this situation I see someone dealing with that and so this is how I know how to handle it this is how I learned how to handle it that is so very important to me and so these breadcrumbs coming across them and looking at them through these photo albums has really helped me solidify and, and evolve uh, the, the stories, the world 
that is being built around Cowgirl Cameron because she was me and she's who I needed in that pivotal time in my equestrian journey. For my email list also. There is where I spill majority of my details because I really do feel like in building a community, you do your best when you are I'm not even going to say you. I'm going to say me. I'm going to make it real clear that this is for me. This is what works for me. I do my best and I bring my best self when I am engaging in a conversation back and forth with someone who is already invested in such a small investment, just given an email address to say, hey, I'm interested in figuring out what this relationship could look like what kind of conversations you're having and how I can contribute to that. I do, I thrive the best when I am having a mutual conversation. And when you sign up for my email list, that's what we're having. It is a mutual back and forth to say, this is what I'm exploring right now. How does that show up in your life? As far as services that I offer in 2024, um, I'm still offering brand strategy sessions. Um, I'm increasing the amount of time and um, increasing the amount of value that it brings. So keep a lookout for that. I'm also doing something new. I have been doing coaching in small increments, one-on-one. I do it a lot in some of the contract work that I do also. But this year I'm launching a group program. It's going to be small cohort, 12 weeks, digital hoof print coaching. And we're going to go through understanding how to craft your digital hoof print based on the capacity that you have right now to sustain an amazing experience for the people that you want to engage with you. So I'm super excited about developing that. And you'll hear a little bit about that later on. And then the third way to to, um, engage with me this year is through um, kind of one of my larger services. It is a retainer kind of contract-based service where I am integrating some sort of transformation in your business. So I call it integrated transformation design for right now. Um, But it is a more long-term retainer base where I am coming into your business, understanding uh, where some of your challenges lie and building and... um, assessing and implementing a lot of the different strategies that I use or recommend kind of through this digital hoof print concept to increase the efficiency and the operations and the brand development of your organization. So um, those are the three ways that you can engage with me this year. Y'all, I kept it at 30 minutes. (laughs) So Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I will catch you on the next one. Have a great rest of your week.